It's happening all over Judea and Samaria. All these places are just been, you know, dug up and destroyed. And it's it's criminal. It's it's really, it's it's beyond criminal because it's something that you can't get back. This is the heritage of so many people in the world, Jews and Christians, and I would like to think Muslims too, who understand that there's a deeper thing going on here in this country that God has, has chosen and made such a special place. And welcome to The Watchman. It's a site with incredible significance for Jews and Christians, and it's at the center of a growing controversy over Palestinian attempts to erase biblical history. The site, believed to be Joshua's altar, which sits atop the biblical Mount Ebal, was damaged recently by Palestinian Authority workers. They damaged the exterior wall and ground stones from the sacred site into gravel, all while supposedly doing road work. The altar itself thankfully was not harmed. Local Samaria residents attempted to fix the damage and Israeli President Reuven Rivlin has called for the Israel Defense Forces to investigate. But the damage is done. The Book of Joshua describes how Moses commanded the Israelites to build an altar to the Lord once they crossed the Jordan River and entered the Promised Land. Joshua and the ancient Israelites made sacrifices to God there, and the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle stood on that very spot. Now, I've been to the site, and it is a very special place. It's actually in Area B, meaning it's under Palestinian Authority control. We needed an armed escort from the Israel Defense Forces just to visit it. Take a look at this recent Watchman clip. I am so excited to be where we are standing right now. We're on the mountains of Israel in Samaria, the biblical heartland. What is this structure right behind us? It's unbelievable. This is the altar of Joshua Binun. Here they gather together all the tribe, the 12 tribes of Israel. Six stand on this mountain, on Grizzly Mountain. The other six stood here. And, and this is Mount Ebal. This is Mount Ebal. From the Bible. From the Bible. Grizim and Ebal. And here stood the first time of the tabernacle. They put it here. The Ark of, Coven of the Covenant also stood here. And the holy priest used to sacrifice the animals that they are allowed and pure to eat on this structure. This altar, Yaquil, 3,300 years old, by the way, Joshua's altar, Joshua ben Nun, son of Nun, uh, as you said. Not only was the altar here with the sacrifices, this is sacred ground we're standing on, the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle, and probably a million Israelites standing all around. Yes, they used to do the ceremony that Moses commanded them just a few years before. They will cross the, the Jordan River. You will go just ahead straight to this mountain and on Ebal Mountain, you will build the altar. Folks, the Palestinian Authority claims that the damage to the altar was accidental, but that's hard to believe. Mahmoud Abbas and other PA officials know very well what this site represents and they don't like it because it proves the truth of the biblical narrative. The damage to Joshua's altar is part of a larger effort by the Palestinian Authority to erase biblical history in Judea, Samaria, and in Jerusalem, including on the Temple Mount. Israeli tour guide and lecturer Eve Harrow follows this issue closely. She's director of tourism and community projects development for the One Israel Fund. She's also a voice for biblical truth. Take a look. Eve, thanks so much for joining us. It is great to have you. Hey, Joshua's altar, the place that many believe is the site of Joshua's altar deep in the Samaria region of Israel, recently was damaged. Uh, the exterior wall around it. What is the latest? Obviously, a hugely significant site for all Bible believers, Christian and Jew alike. What is the latest on that incident? Well, the latest on the incident is that it was intentional. All right. They have the Arab 
guy, the tractor guy, talking about how he intentionally destroyed it. And I think what people need to realize is this is just the latest in a series of many incidents to destroy biblically sensitive sites in the land of Israel. Most people look at what's happening here as like a land issue, a territorial issue. This is much deeper than that. It is also a religious war. It's an attempt of Islam to eradicate the traces of Christianity and Judaism here. It's not the first time that they've tried to do that. In the last 1400 years have pretty much been a back and forth war between the Christians and the Muslims here in the Holy Land with the Jews kind of hanging on for dear life. And now we've got our state back. This is much deeper than it looks. It's not just destroying the wall. It's trying to erase a biblical connection to this place. And that altar, if that is Joshua's altar, and I believe that it is, I used to go there with the late Adam Zer Tal, the archaeologist who discovered it, phenomenal. Did not grow up in a Bible-oriented house and came to believe in the book of Joshua because of what he found during his archaeological career. It has all the signs of being about 3,200 years old and just an egregious way of destroying it and taking over as much land as possible and building in places they're not supposed to build in. There's a Hasmonean fortress not far from there called uh, Aruma that they have now planted a huge Palestinian Authority flag on and filled up some of the ancient cisterns. Hasmoneans 21, 2200 years ago, filled up the cisterns with cement and they've declared it a heritage site. Sebastia, Shomron, which was the capital of Israel, the two states, Israel and Judah, way back when, they have now declared it a Palestinian heritage site, heritage site with the help of the Belgians. They're not doing this alone. And that's something that's very important to keep in mind. This is not a coincidence. These are not accidents. This is a premeditated campaign by the Palestinian Authority, which extends even to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Could you tell us more about how they're trying to cover up the biblical history in Jerusalem of all places? Right. So we've got aerial photos that are showing the massive changes on the Temple Mount from year to year, where they have dug a mosque out in parts of what were the temple. We know from people who were down there before that you've got beautiful corridors, passageways, and and all kinds of designs from Herod, who redid the temple, again, over 2,000 years ago. So they are doing whatever they can. They have thrown out hundreds of truckloads of dirt, which of course isn't dirt. The Temple Mount should be dug with a Q-tip and toothpicks. That is how sensitive a site it is. And instead, they're just throwing things out by the truckload. And of course, we've got the sifting dig, which has been going on for years, trying to unearth through that rubble and, and try and find significant things. So the Temple Mount is maybe the most nefarious of what they're doing. But here, I really have to put a word of criticism into my own government. Because when you are sovereign, you have to stop this. If you allow people to do these kinds of things, it shows that you're not really in control. I was just out at Tel Tekoa. Some of you who might be really into the Bible might have heard of Tekoa, the wise women of Tekoa. It's where the prophet Amos comes from. And I was up there on a group trip with a bunch of people. It's completely, there's pits everywhere that are being dug to, to loot and to steal all kinds of archaeological artifacts. It's almost unrecognizable. It's happening all over Judea and Samaria. All these places are just been, you know, dug up and destroyed and it's it's criminal it's it's really it's it's beyond criminal because it's something that you can't get back this is the heritage of so many people in the world jews and christians and i would like to think muslims too who understand that there's a deeper thing going on here in this country that god has has chosen and made such a special place hey everyone thanks for checking out the watchman newscast if you enjoyed this episode and want to see more make sure you go ahead and hit the like button Click subscribe and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.